Hey guys, and thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to create a point and click controller for an RPG character. You can compare it to games like RuneScape or Diablo. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to follow along on my game dev journey. Speaking of subscribers, we're almost to 200, which doesn't sound like much to you, but to me it really means a lot, so thanks so much for subscribing. If you're interested in growing the community, make sure to join the Discord. We've had a lot of people join. It's getting great. Great conversations. It's very helpful. I'd just, I'd love for you to be a part of the founding group. Also, I'm getting into streaming, so come check me out on Twitch or even here on YouTube. The links for everything are in the description below. So let's get going. First things first, for this controller, we're going to set up a little obstacle course for our guy to go around. So let's create a ground. I'll create a cube, scale it up to about 25 on the X and Z, and then down to 0.2 on the Y. We have a thin but wide area to walk around. Next, I'll create an empty object to hold all the obstacles, and I'll call it obstacles. We'll stick a bunch of cubes in there and we'll stretch them out and position them. Let's give our guy something to move around. Now, we'll create the nav mesh for the area. First, let's make all the obstacles static. And yes, change the children. Then, I'll just make the ground static, and this just lays the navigation groundwork. If you look at the navigation tab, everything's already walkable, so we just have to make the obstacles not walkable, and that's it. So first, let's select all the obstacles, and then the object tab, just set them to non-walkable. And now all we have to do is bake the nav mesh, and everything should magically turn into a working nav mesh. Next thing, we'll import our character. So first, I'll create an empty game object and call it player. And then inside the files provided down in the description, there's a man underscore walk dot blend file. Just drag that into Unity. Then I drag him as a child of the player, and then we'll just move the player to wherever we want him to go. Since he's facing backwards, I'll just rotate him 180 on the Y. Just so it looks nice. And then I'll make the camera a child of the player, and we'll set it up so we can get that classic RPG feel. Now let's add the components that we need to add to the player. First, let's add a capsule collider, and we'll just change it so it fits the guy. Let's move it up one on the Y, and then change the height to two. Next, we'll add a rigid body, and we'll set it to kinematic. This will keep that capsule collider from turning our character into a rolling ball. And then add a nav mesh agent, which is the fundamental piece of this controller's movements. Now we'll create a C sharp script and we'll call it player controller. Once it opens, I'll clear everything out. That's how I like to start. And I'll create a private nav mesh agent called underscore agent. Underscore because it's private. Also, it isn't showing up because we have to add unityengine.ai to the namespace at the top. Next in start, we'll call agent equals get component nav mesh agent. Then in update, we want to raycast every time we click. So we'll do if input dot get mouse button down zero so every time we left click, we'll raycast. So ray ray equals camera dot main green point to ray input dot mouse position, which will shoot a ray from the camera every time we click. And we'll also create a raycast hit variable called hit info, which will house the info of whatever we hit. Now to check if we hit something, we do if physics dot raycast ray comma out hit info, then we'll print, which is similar to debug dot log. And if you haven't seen this string notation before, it's just a little more streamlined. Just dollar sign and quotation marks, and then in curly brackets you put whatever your variable is. So here I'll put dollar sign hit, and then in curly brackets hit info dot collider dot name. That's going to print hit, and then the name of whatever we hit in the console. Then we'll use a move function which we have to create, which will take hit info as the parameter. And so now let's create the private void move, which will take a vector three, which we'll call point. And then next, call agent.setDestination to the point that we put. So now, we should have a working character controller. Let's add the script to the player, and let's check it out. Yep, there we go guys. We click, our guy moves. The camera is very stylized. I think it looks a lot like an RPG. Not perfect, but good enough for this movement script. I'm just going to move the camera out and unparent it though, just for the sake of this video. We can get a full view of that map. So now, with our better view, you can click anywhere, and the guy will automatically navigate around the obstacles. So now that we have that movement part down, we're going to just do one final thing. We'll animate it. And this is just to show you how it's done with this specific type of controller. So first, let's import the animations. We have an idle and a walk. Okay, cool. Next, let's make our character rigged as a humanoid, and created from this model, so he can take on those animations. And so now we'll drag the idle animation and drag it onto our character. And voila, when we push play, he's idle. Awesome. Next, let's add the walk animation. So drag that on, it'll be gray. 
And so now we have to also create a script to regulate it. So we'll create a new C Sharp script called Character Animator. All right, and clear it out. We need a private animator underscore animator and a private nav mesh agent underscore agent. Don't forget, we also need to add Unity Engine.ai. And then in start, we'll call agent equals get component nav mesh agent. And then animator equals get component in children animator. It's get component in children because the character is actually underneath the player object. Then in update, we'll create a float called speed. And this will calculate our current speed, agent.velocity.magnitude. And then we'll divide that by the top speed, agent.speed. And then animator.setFloat. And in quotations, we'll put speed, comma, speed, our new variable. So we need to create a parameter in the animator that matches the string exactly. So if it's lowercase, both need to be lowercase. Now, we'll create transitions from your animations. From idle to walk, if speed is greater than zero, we'll walk. If speed is less than 0.1, stop. Also, let's make sure to get rid of that exit time and fixation, and we'll set that also to 0.1, which gives a little smoothing. All right, and now let's attach the character animator script. And when we push play, we got our guy walking when he's moving, and he stops when he stops. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to check out the Discord and mingle with some friends. Also, check out my Patreon for exclusive access to the scripts and early access to unreleased games. Thanks again for watching. Bye.